for the M205 this year, we fitted shock absorbers in each of the corners. We have a shock absorber mounted up in here. You can see it a little bit closer at the front. Let's just come a little bit more around to the front here to get a better view of that shock absorber. And you can see that shock absorber is right in this area here. There's a shock absorber mounted in each corner, giving us a independent four point mount system. We call this the Macdon Ultra Glide. And that is unique to Macdon because most of our competitors have a two point system suspension. The coils are mounted at the back of the cab. We've put them on all four corners to give you the very, very smooth ride. So let's keep moving back as we go around. You notice that we have easy access to the cab on both sides. But we've also made a servicing platform here. This servicing platform can be slid back to give access to all of the uh, electrical panel, the fuse panel here, and also to the cab air filter, which is mounted behind this panel. We've also put the batteries on the right-hand side, so all very easily accessible. This platform is locked at the back, so that if we do want to service the engine, I'll open up the hood and just show you how that is done. So now we have full access to the engine. This is a Cummins 6.7 liter. You'll notice that the platform now has the opportunity for the uh, servicing mechanic to be able to walk up and easily service the air filter, check the radiator fluid, as well as have a look at the hydraulic tank where there is also a sight glass being installed for 2011 production. Okay, we'll now close the steps. Convenient lever on the back side. Steps now move forward. Lock into place. We provided access for, for the cooler cores. If we just undo this lever. The new combined cooler core for the air conditioning and the hydraulics combined into one core you can easily pull it out for servicing. If we move around to the back of the machine, what you're going to notice, we've retained the hinge door, again giving us access to the back. Where we can blow out the fuel cooler as well as the charge air cooler. The charge air cooler this year has different types of fins on it. You'll notice it's more of a round profile rather than the square profile on the M200. I'm going to climb up on top because there's one more access door we need to have a look at. The left hand side also slides back. Now as we climb up for servicing, the same way as we do on the right hand side, when we get to the top, what you're going to see when you get here is that right on top here is another cover that can be opened up to provide access to cleaning out the radiator. Notice we have an access panel on the top, we flip the catch around. This catch now will release this top cover and allow us to take an air hose, a wand, we can put it down inside here for cleaning out the core. If we slide out the core again, so now when you look down from the top, you'll notice that it's very much open. We're getting an air one down inside for blowing out the radiator and blowing out the charge air cooler. And we're also going to close down the hood. Before we close the hood, you notice that we have screen sweeps on the back to keep the screen clear. This brings us now around to the left side of the machine. Some of the new features we've added for convenience. We've added a two post, a positive post and a negative post for either battery boosting or for running such things as um, fuel pumps for uh, refueling in the field. A new feature now is also a toolbox. It's a larger toolbox than we had in the past. Able to carry large wrenches um, and any type of uh, material you want to carry in there. where it's guards or sections. 
We have the same type of feature on this platform. We're going to slide it back. Again, it latches into place and it can be part of a servicing platform for the left side of the engine. When we move into the hydraulics, there's been a really a large change down to the hydraulics. On the M200, we have two pumps. On the M205, we just have a single pump. This single pump has a, a pressure line and a return line here. These two lines feed out to the drive where we first started on the header. If you are going to put on a draper table, you will need to put on this valve block that is uh, complete with its filter, it comes to the factory already assembled, you just bolt it onto the machine. This then allows you, through these hoses that are mounted here, and then through this uh, support tube and the other hoses, these will go out to drive your draper table. So you'll notice that we've actually simplified this machine for disc header use, uh, still make it compatible for our auger headers and our draper tables.